Crews have a lot of cleanup after protests in D.C. for Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's visit. But inside the White House and wrapping up just a couple hours ago in D.C., President Biden and Vice President Harris met with Netanyahu. They reportedly talked about the war in Gaza and possibly coming to a ceasefire deal that would bring the remaining hostages home. The White House says they're in the closing stages of negotiations, but some issues still need to be resolved. So from... Uh... A, a proud Jewish Zionist to a proud Irish American Zionist. I want to thank you for uh, 50 years of public service and 50 years of support for the state of Israel. Tomorrow, Netanyahu will meet with former President Trump at Mar a Lago. This is their first meeting since 2020. Meanwhile, a large number of pro-Palestinian demonstrators are in D.C. for his visit. A smaller number of counter-protesters were there as well. And yesterday, those pro-Palestinian protesters gathered by the thousands outside to denounce the prime minister and call for an end to military aid for Israel. Those protesters congregated while Netanyahu delivered a speech to a joint session of Congress. Tensions have been running high between demonstrators and police. And in D.C., our news partners share this video of yesterday crowd. You can see Capitol Police spraying what looks to be tear gas into the crowd. These protesters came from all across the country, including right here in Connecticut. We spoke with one of those activists who traveled down to D.C. yesterday. She said she felt like law enforcement instigated some of the marchers, but believes it was important for her to still show up. The stakes are uh, incredibly high at this point to make a message known and to show the community within the United States, as well as, you know, the international community that uh, we can't tolerate, uh, you know, the siege on Gaza anymore. We're not particularly optimistic. Vice President Harris will put enough pressure on Netanyahu or the state of Israel to end its bombardment and siege on Gaza. I don't see that pressure happening either in Kamala Harris's uh, rhetoric now or her more sidelined role. Um, during the, during the Biden administration. The war in Gaza is a big factor for the 2024 election and now presumptive Democratic nominee uh, Harris's base. Many residents who decided to vote uncommitted in the Democratic primary say they are still unsure if they are willing to vote for Kamala Harris without a ceasefire or conditions on weapons and aid to Israel.